Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I found a real passion for street art. I think it's just amazing to me how you can take an artist and a real estate owner and get them together and really bring a community together. It's just, it's something that a lot of developers have been doing lately and it really, really helps their community and helps bring their communities together, which I think in turn will help drive retail sales, more people want to be in the offices, on and on. So I think there's a real plus for here. So I asked my friend Ava Boros to come in today and she's been involved in street art for a lot of years. She's actually, she produces, uh, she brings the artists and the developers together, works with the cities and get them and make sure it's good and legal. So this is about legal street art, not graffiti. So I didn't really know the definition before that there was a difference, but I learned that today. So make sure you check out the video and while you're there, give us a like. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Joe Killinger. I've been a real estate entrepreneur for over 20 years. And I bring people like Ava in and really walk through some of the stories they have to tell that I think can really benefit you. So make sure you check out the video. Give us a like while you're there. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. So Ava, let's talk about street art. It's something that's really become a fascination of mine because it's, you know, I drive around Los Angeles and Venice and downtown L.A., and some of the work is absolutely amazing. But, you know, I, I think we should start from the very beginning and get your true definition of street art. Yeah. So street art is, um, so let me just preface this by saying that there are two forms of public art. Okay. There's graffiti and then there's street art. And graffiti is illegal. It's the predecessor for street art. Mm -hmm. And street art is legally commissioned. Um, and it's uh, typically uh, commissioned privately or it's commissioned publicly by the city. And it is truly street art when it's not informed by any advertising incentives mm. or any marketing or uh, anything of that sort. But it really honors the artistic freedom of the artist. Okay. Yes. It's, I actually hadn't thought about the difference between graffiti and street art. I kind of lumped them together. Yeah. What, so it's really, what makes a, a great street artist? Funny enough, graffiti does. Yeah, uh, practicing, starting off yes. illegally, and then moving into the legal side of it. Yes. So a lot of uh, amazing street artists, some of the most successful street artists, uh, started off painting illegally. And, uh, you know, while they were younger and painting illegally, they were able to cultivate a style and a technique that was really perfected under pressure, under a lot of pressure and very dangerous mm -hmm. circumstances. Oh, so, yeah. and they have a lot of experience painting on different types of walls. Mm -hmm. You know, they can get uh, high up, they can, you know, paint uh, walls with a lot of, um, mm -hmm structural damage very well mm -hmm. uh, they know how to cover it they know how to cover walls well so uh, yes okay um, and uh, i'm afraid you know me coming from the real estate side and you coming from the art world mm -hmm. we might end up in a fist fight but um if somebody illegally uh puts graffiti on a property mm -hmm. who owns that uh yeah, that's, you know, that's a question that has been de debated uh, by many people for a very long time. And I don't want to give an answer because I agree with both sides. Yeah, I kind of really do, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I did watch your film and I was, uh, I was impressed with what you guys did on that. Um, saving Banksy and it was just it was amazing it was um, in the artwork in the story behind it in the way it's changed some of the um, permitting from cities in the way it's you know where um, in San Francisco it was illegal they had to get it removed to where you know they completely changed the whole way the, the process in those cities uh, do you believe that good street art can help create community I'm coming from a real estate yeah. side, so our our subscribers are people that want to become real estate investors or real estate agents. So yes. I really think this is something that I want to create awareness on how street art, I think, 
yeah. can really help build a community. But I'm anxious to hear what your your opinion on it. So historically speaking, there's been a lot of animosity between real estate developers and pre-existing communities, um, mm -hmm. you know, and they call it gentrification. And one of the ways that they uh, connect is through art. Okay. Because murals don't necessarily create the community it's the community that informs the mural so a lot of these international artists that you know travel from abroad um, they typically spend about a week uh, a few days exploring the community exploring the city eating the food getting to know the locals and they will paint a mural based on what they absorb so it usually those murals reflect the community and it gives the community a sense of ownership over their space and it does bridge the gap between uh, urban development and locals. Okay now it's the company you're working with now you guys have done how many murals around the country? Um, a lot. Um, yeah. I'd say a hundred about. Oh that many? Yeah. Uh, is it mostly in bigger cities, smaller communities? What What is the community you're typically in? Uh, everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, the largest mural in North America in Canada, it's in Sudbury, Canada, okay. and it's 90,000 square feet. And it's an entire building covered by Risky, um, mm -hmm. godfather of West Coast graffiti. Yeah. He painted the entire building. Um, it's uh, an abandoned hospital, and it's in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. you see it off the freeway. We're going to put some of your art through this video. Yes, yes, so, I will. Um, or some of your murals. Um, um, so yeah, so we, we really, we paint everywhere. And then, you know, I have a few projects coming up in downtown Nashville. So, okay. yeah. See, I think it could work in any community. And I think in some communities, it can really help bring people together. It really can. You know, it yeah. really, I think it can really drive people to want to come see the artwork. You know, more retail is going to show up if more population is coming through. Yes. So they can be very viable for your community. I think let's let's get into costs. Okay. And um, now the if it's a developer or if it's a city that hires your a company mm -hmm. to come in or an artist to come in and paint, they pay for that, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Or so the property owner or the city pay for it. Can you kind of break us down on just, and I'm not going to hold you to this, but just average fees. What about what? What are your fees? How do they run? So, typically for cost, uh, it's about fourteen to twenty dollars per square foot. Per square foot, mm -hmm. that's kind of expensive. Yes, we do scale down the cost if the wall is massive. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so it really just depends. Um, for example, you know, we just did a wall that was 50 by 40, and it was about $35,000. Okay. They flew an artist in from New York City. Okay. Um, originally, they wanted an artist from South America that was going to be a quarter million. Oh! Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this artist was very um, prominent. Okay. So, Do you... Um... Once you, if you work with a big developer and, and the city has to approve it, right? So you pull permits, everything. Everything. Yeah. We take care of street closures. We work with uh, city codes, permitting. We take care of boom lifts, scaffolding, okay. all the insurance. logistics. Yeah. We have insurance. We take care of the insurance. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I can see where, you know, it's... Because I'm sure you still get it in some communities that they, you know, I didn't, I don't like that art. Um, do you get a lot of pushback on that or hardly any? Uh, all the time, which is why I always work with private funders. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would think that'd be a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the paint. What kind of paint do you put on? I mean, everybody, you know, we're big into green right now. So can you tell us the paint and do you coat it with something to make it last longer? No, not necessarily. Um, again, it really just depends on the artist. Um, there are artists like Guido Van Helten. Uh, he painted the silo in West Nashville. And okay. um, obviously, we had to bring in an artist who works with, uh, who loves to work with walls that are old. Yeah. And he uses only spray paint. Okay. Um, and he uses um, very monotone, uh, monotone? Uh, 
very few tones of paint. Okay. Uh, because the his his process at first when his mural is finished, mm -hmm. it's vibrant, but as it ages, it becomes part of the uh, structure. Okay. So. Uh, it's it's very fascinating. Um, all the paint we use, all the spray paint, is uh, ozone safe. Okay. So we are very uh, environmentally conscious. Um, we do only use as much paint as we need. So we're often running out and getting more paint if we need it. Um, okay. And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for. Now, what's the what's the biggest project you've done? The 90,000 square foot. Now you have one up coming, coming up, potentially coming up. It's a lot bigger, right? Oh yeah. How long will that take? And let's say three it could, weeks. Is that like 200,000 square feet? Mm -hmm. Three weeks is all it's going to take. Yeah. I'm okay, telling so, you, <laughs> these guys they that started seems painting insane in to me. and they yeah. I mean that's it's a whole side of a building. I mean, this is this is a huge project. Well, you should know that the substrate we are trying to get approved by the city is mm -hmm. going to be the color that the artist wants. So okay. we don't have to go in and prime the wall. Okay. Yeah. Still, three weeks to paint two hundred thousand square feet. I mean, yeah. I, can't, I can only imagine. It might even take less. I just I can't imagine the scaffolding that and just moving that around. I would I was gonna I thought you were gonna say like months, months and months, mm -hmm. six months, something like that. That's amazing to me. So a smaller wall can just take a, a couple of weeks or a few days mm -hmm. with yeah. the right artist. With the right artist, yeah. So that's something is A, how do I find an artist? And B, is some a novice like me, how do I know if they're good or not? Um, is there a, a site that you can go to help? Is there a site that's up that, you know, here's, we represent these artists and this is who you should talk to for this size project or nobody's really created that yet? So most cities will have uh, public art and mural organizations. Okay. Um, you know, I, I would stay away from trying to figure out who's good and who isn't good and just go for what you love. Okay. Um, well, yeah, so typically when you want to commission a piece of art, um, you want to decide what style of art you'd like. Abstract, photorealist, do you want vibrant, do you want black and white? Because the artists who are really good at what they do uh, know how to execute that genre of art that you really want. So um, let's say you would like an abstract piece of art on your wall and uh, you see an Augustine coffee mural somewhere or even an Augustine coffee painting. Mm -hmm. You know, you can even walk into a gallery and see a piece of art and say, oh my gosh, I love that and reach out to the artist and ask if they paint murals or not. Okay. Yeah. Um, if they have been painting murals for a long time, they know what they're doing. If they haven't painted many murals, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult to oh, yeah. create something with them. That but, scale, figuring that scale out, I would think would be so difficult. What scale? Uh, that, something as big as 90,000 square feet or 200,000 square feet. And Well, the artist that they're flying in, James Rucka, he is incredibly talented and he's been doing this for many years. Is so, that what he specializes in, is big ticket projects? Uh, he's also a gallery artist. Oh, okay. Studio artist, yes. Yeah. And I have no talent. <laughs> and he's got all this. <laughs> Not fair. Um, yeah, I think it'd be very hard to, uh, for me, it'd be hard to choose. I would, I would sit there and be interviewing so many people. Um, but can, I just can't imagine looking at 200,000 square foot wall and going, yeah, I can do this. And, you know, I don't see how you take it from being on paper onto the wall with the scale of it. And mm -hmm. um, that's impressive. What um, are there artists that do just specialize in big walls and people that specialize in certain sizes? Or they can all pretty much do? They can all pretty much do anything. Really, okay. you know, um, you just have to think about why you want public art, what 
is the incentive? Why do you want to pay fifty to a hundred thousand dollars right. for a piece of art? Knowing that is good in and of itself because yeah. if you reach out to a local public arts organization or if you go into a gallery and talk to the owner or the gallery director, they're gonna be able to tell you where you can find a good artist or who you should reach out to who can bring that vision to life. So if you want something that speaks to the community, if you want if as a developer you want to give back to the community, then you want to hire an artist who is either local to that community mm -hmm. or who's gonna come in and you know create something that reflects the community. And you know, one of the things that we do is we always, always hire local artists to work with international artists. And it's been really beneficial because now we have artists who were once local artists in Nashville and they're now traveling all over the world. And so they yeah. picked up the craft and yeah. learned how to do it. Now they're spreading it too. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. And I can see where, in a, especially a retail or office, you've got a big project, you've got a big wall, and you make art for your community, make it more attractive. I'd rather office in, or shop in that community mm -hmm. because of art. Yeah, and it's all often it's a selling point mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, realtors. For example, in West Nashville, a view of the silo mm -hmm. is actually a selling point. Okay. Um, they even have a billboard. I believe it is a real estate company in West Nashville that has a billboard with the silo on it. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there's the 505 Tower in downtown Nashville that I got to, you know, tour before um, it opens. And they have floors from which you can see the... Um, Roa mural or the shoe mural and okay. you know having those views already elevates um i mean i don't want to say they charge more for those for those apartments they, i don't think they do but it's desirable. definitely yes i'm yeah. sure they rent first you know i would think people would say yeah i'd rather have the view yeah. this art than than not how did you get started what i mean obviously your your passion is art but what is with the street art how did you find that? How did you come in doing that? It's interesting. Um, so I grew up all over the world. I was okay. born in Germany. I grew up in Hungary. I came to the States. Um, I moved around a lot. Within mm -hmm. the States, I lived in Columbus. I grew up here in LA. Um, I would go back to Europe and, you know, travel around, you know, Morocco and um, Italy and France and Spain. And, uh, Graffiti and public art was the one thing that was similar okay. throughout all of those landscapes. It was present everywhere. And uh, that is how I was able to relate or associate um, okay. with my environment because it was constantly changing, but there was always art. So uh, when I was hired to write Saving Banksy, I got mm -hmm. to work with street artists and graffiti artists mm -hmm. and uh through they're, that they're a different breed i mean they are real rebels the, the ones i've met that is yeah they are they've always been but the passion is so strong fun to be around yeah i mean they're adrenaline junkies yeah. basically yeah yeah the graffiti guys yes they're all i just didn't like and but the passion for it is just really something and they create some amazing art for communities yeah yeah, they really do. Um, who have you met? I was a client of George's. He was, I don't remember his name. It's um, I meant to ask George before we started shooting this, but um, he was one of the first guys here in L.A. And he ended up with a fashion line and everything. So, And yeah. uh, he was down in Torrance, but he was also up on the brand Fairfax. I'll get you his name. But cool. um, yeah, the, the passion that whole team had for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a little intoxicating being around. I always found a reason to go down to the showrooms along with George. So, um, but very interesting career path you've chosen. I, I would uh, a little jealous actually, but I can see where you know mixing the art with the real estate in a community can really be a benefit to a community. Mm -hmm. And I think it's if if people have um, real estate that has a, a wall and finding, obviously you want to search out local talent first, right? 
see if you can find Whatever somebody you want to do. I mean, you know, you're at the end of the day, you're the building owner. Yeah. And you should, if you're going to spend a lot of money on a piece of art, you should feel empowered to, uh, you know, do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, the local arts community, they're always going to benefit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they're always going to be involved in some way, shape or form. Uh, and, you know, within the graffiti community, you're always going to get a little bit of pushback from the, you know, locals. You're always going to get a little bit of pushback. There's always going to be a conversation around that one piece of public art. But that's what makes it so unique and special is that, you know, it really does uh, emotionally affect people like mm -hmm. and for as many people that may push back, there are eight more that will love it. Yeah. And, you know, now in Nashville, we have like three different mural tours, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there are, I personally think it's definitely boosted tourism in Nashville. I would say so. Absolutely. It also increases property values. Mm -hmm. um, it also maintains a cleanliness around the environment or within its environment uh you can have a you can commission a piece of art to keep illegal graffiti away so you know property owners also use it for that yeah. so um there's really no i i just really want to emphasize that we wouldn't have street art without urban developers right? right the same way we wouldn't have street art without street artists so it's it's a relationship that um is very beneficial helpful for both sides and you know i think everyone should feel empowered to navigate it the way that they want to perfect yeah. um all right so if you could go to dinner with one street artist who would it be and why? I swear to God, if you say Banksy. Not Banksy. Oh, do you know who he is first of all? He or she is first of all. No, I do not. I was going for that. You saw it here first thing. Failed. Um, if, if Banksy walked up to me and was like, I'm Banksy, I wouldn't believe it. No, yeah, probably not. I wouldn't either. Too synonymous with anonymity. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I wouldn't even want to believe it. <laughs> um, I would go to dinner with, uh, that's such a hard question, and I've thought about it um, for a while, probably Basquiat. Okay, why? Yes. Uh, because his graffiti is just so different from his studio work. Okay. You know, typically there's a similarity between the illegal art and the studio art. Mm -hmm. Once they go in from the street to the studio, they take a lot of those elements into the studio with them. And Basquiat didn't really do that. And I just find his work both, I mean, it, you know, he tagged Samo, right? Okay. So, um, but his studio work is just so amazing. And, you know, I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to meet some people who have told me a little more about his technique. And um, it's just, it's fascinating. So I would, I would love to ask him about, you know, his technique, how he makes the paint and, you know, everyone he's worked with. I want all the gossip. Well, I never thought about how you mix the paint. Well, Ava, thank you very much for coming in today. I think this was very insightful. If people want to get hold of you, how do they do that? Uh, they can email me um, at ava at choicecontemporary.com or my personal email. If you want, you can throw it up. Okay, or... I'll get it from you and we'll pop it up. Okay, great. On below the video. Yeah, we'll thank put you for her having me. Oh, yeah. So, thank you for taking the wait, time to come in. And... Who would you have dinner with? I would love to talk to Banksy. I would like to know why. Why the anonymity? What is, I mean, is it obviously so he didn't get arrested, arrested in the beginning? Yeah. But now people would pay him or her. Do we know if it's a guy or a girl even? We don't know anything about it. Um, I just love the fact that his whole team that actually has worked with him 
mm-hmm. knows who they, the person is, how that hasn't leaked over the years. I mean, they're under really strict NDAs. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. But if you're going to write a book, you know, <laughs> the lawsuit might be worth it, right? Um, but I'd love to just sit down and see what makes them tick. Or how, you know, in the beginning, I get, you know, doing it. But now... Yeah. He's not going to get, he or she's not going to get arrested. I mean, it works. Yeah. I'm sure. He, no, he, she, he would. The painting that sold at the auction that was shredded. Yes. That was brilliant. Mm-hmm. That was absolutely brilliant. And people like that to have those kind of ideas, I just find that having a conversation with them and see what makes them tick. I love that part. So that's my choice. Well, you got to let me know when you have to. Yeah, yeah, wish me luck. Um, All right, well, thank you. Uh, For those of you watching today, uh, Ava's information will be down below. And if you haven't done so, make sure you check out the video and give us a like. (laughs) 